At its core, Verdi's La Traviata is an opera about love and loss. But what is it about the opera that has captured the attention of mouthpiece maker Nick Kupmeyer, so much so that he decided to name one of his mouthpieces after it? Was it perhaps that he was just trying to capture the essence of the main female role? The vocalist who plays Violetta must have an extraordinary range. Not only must they perform high-flying coloratura lines, but they also must be able to dig into the weightier, more dramatic moments. You could say that many clarinet pieces require the same of their performer. Was he perhaps just a really big fan of the second act clarinet solo? A sad, mournful, yet beautiful solo that perfectly captures the emotions of the moment. That's a possibility as well. One thing I doubt, however, I doubt he was trying to capture the essence of a young woman dying of tuberculosis. Something about lung disease doesn't seem very woodwind friendly. But anyway, uh, welcome to my 2021 review of the Verdi Traviata Plainic mouthpiece. Alrighty, as always, let's start by talking about the design. Over the last four to five years, there's been a growing trend in the clarinet world. If you live in certain parts of Europe, you might be laughing, as this has been more common for quite some time. But what I am talking about is the creation and usage of what I consider to be ultra-open clarinet mouthpieces. While mouthpieces with a tip opening greater than 1.2 millimeters have been around for a very long time, I have seldom, if ever, seen them performed on outside of the jazz community. That seems to be changing. You have mouthpiece makers like Ramon Ronkowski producing many models with tip openings larger than 1.2 millimeters. He calls this particular line his European series. Then, back in 2019, we saw Van Doren release the BD7, a gaping 1.33 millimeter long face mouthpiece. And then, in 2020, we had Bakun slash Hawkins release an addition to their Vocalese line with the Z model, which they compare to the Van Doren BD7. Of course, there are many other manufacturers making mouthpieces with a tip opening larger than 1.20 millimeters. This includes Plainic and their Verdi Traviata. This mouthpiece features a 1.28 millimeter tip opening with a long facing. But what does this larger tip opening really give you? While paraphrasing Plainic's description, it offers freedom, increased color, and increased dynamics. I'd also be remiss if I didn't also point out that this mouthpiece has thick side and tip rails that harken back to other Plainic models. This no doubt allows it to help maintain some of the cover and darkness that Plainic mouthpieces are known for. When playing this mouthpiece, due to its long facing, you can get away with using relatively hard reeds. In this video, Nick suggests using 3.5 or maybe even 4 strength reeds. Interestingly enough, in the same video, he recommends taking a little bit less mouthpiece when playing on this mouthpiece. Now, this runs counter to everything I and apparently others have been taught, judging by the conversation this particular video sparked online. The typical advice being, the longer the facing, the more mouthpiece you should have in your mouth. But it's his design and concept, and so for this video, I will be taking his advice. But I think that gives us a good base, so enough talking. Let's hear a little bit more of how it sounds. Earlier, you heard the second act clarinet solo from La Traviata. Now you will hear a little bit of the opening of the Nielsen Concerto. Right after that, I will play a short snippet of a Kell articulation study, so you can get a sense of how it articulates. After that, I will play a quick chromatic scale, just so you can get an idea of the tuning tendencies for this mouthpiece over the range of the instrument. I know that not everyone's instrument tunes exactly the same way, but hopefully it gives you at least an idea of how it tunes.
And there you have it. As you can see, for me, the intonation curve on this mouthpiece was manageable. In general, the twelfths were slightly wide, but not egregiously so. Uh, in general, I found myself using a little more pressure in the lower register to get the pitch up and relaxing a little more in the upper register to let the pitch drop back down. If I was really committed to using this mouthpiece full time, I would probably just look for a different barrel that helped narrow the twelfths a little bit. I just want to make a quick note. While this video isn't sponsored in any way, I would like to send out a huge thank you to Silverstein Works for sending me this mouthpiece for the sole purpose of doing this review. It's really appreciated. So what are my general impressions of this mouthpiece and who is it for? Well, to be honest, at first I wasn't really sure how to approach playing on this mouthpiece. My standard production approach is very different than I think the one that this mouthpiece calls for. At a certain point, I realized that I simply wasn't using enough air. So I channeled my inner Martin Frost and really tried to fill the instrument out. One quick note I wanna make about those of you more used to playing on closed tip mouthpiece openings, something like the M13 Meyer. This is a wildly different playing experience. If you were to try this out, it would probably take you several days, if not, you know, a couple weeks to really begin to adjust to playing on something like this. So it's something to keep in mind. The mouthpiece can basically take as much air as you can put in it. This of course gives you a huge dynamic range and a lot of color in the sound. I especially heard that in the La Traviata excerpt. There is a beautiful amount of ring and color in the sound. But knowing that, who is it for? In America, it's honestly quite hard to say. Well, I think it has a beautiful, colorful sound, nice flexibility, and a big dynamic range with good response, it may not appeal to a huge range of people. On the American audition circuit, while you can find basically every style of mouthpiece, mouthpieces such as the Van Dorn BD-5 and B-40 Lyre have been king for the last several years. Those style mouthpieces generally allow people to produce a nice, consistent sound with little fear that the sound will unexpectedly shift to being something outside the box. The increased flexibility of something like the Verdi Traviata runs a little bit counter to this idea. Perhaps the audition meta will change now that the pandemic has basically stopped the ability for auditions to take place, at least in America, but only time will tell. Additionally, those seeking to replicate the sounds of clarinetists from a previous generation, such as Harold Wright, Donald Montanaro, or even Robert Marcellus, no, I am not saying that they all sounded the same, should probably look elsewhere. However, I do think there are some people that would really enjoy this style of mouthpiece. People who put a massive amount of air into their instruments already and are looking for a mouthpiece that can handle even more. Musicians who are really into modern and new music may enjoy this for the huge range of sounds it can provide. Or, if you're striving to achieve the huge range of sounds coming from clarinetists out of Scandinavian and other European countries, again, artists like Martin Frost come to mind, then perhaps a mouthpiece like this may interest you. In any case, it was a lot of fun trying this mouthpiece out and getting to explore something I'd never really had the chance to explore before. If you've tried this mouthpiece out, let me know what you thought down in the comments below. Or, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. If you enjoyed this content, please feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Currently about 90% of the people who watch my content are not subscribed. So if you're one of those people, it would really help me out if you go ahead and click that subscribe button. In any case, I really appreciate everyone's support. And until next time, happy practicing.